I'm Rebecca. And I'm Hunter. And this is The, the Family Showdown! Hello and welcome to my top 100 games of all time. And this week, dun da da dun, we're kind of starting it off officially with the 100 to 91. Last time we talked about the stuff that didn't quite make the top 100 list, but today we're actually starting with it. I have my partner in crime here for a colorful commentary and assistance on describing said board games. Are you ready for some greatness? <laughs> Let's roll with it. They're all awesome games, by the Colorful way. Colorful commentary. Like yes, that. absolutely. Absolutely. So, my number 100. Let's start off with something amazing. Dun, da, da, dun. Beyond the Sun. So, what is this game, you may ask? Well, besides the awesome and you all know, or maybe you don't, I like space games a lot. So I was already intrigued by the fact that this was a space game. But what space games usually do is have you focus on a map, and they might as the side thing like have some kind of tech tree or something to upgrade components of your ship, and you fly around and do stuff and nifty cool space things. This game focuses on the tech tree itself, and then all the space things all kind of verse kind of off to the side. It's it's another component of the game, but it's not the main focus of the game. A lot of it really focuses on unlocking these different things to the tech tree, and that's really how you win the game, is getting to these certain points and being able to unlock them. It's really, really good brain burning in a good way. Weight, a medium, medium heavy game. Um, so you've got your tech tree on the board, and then on the other side you've got the your space and you can travel to the different planets and do different things there. But again, a lot of it really is just driven by focusing on unlocking all of the goodies for, from the tech tree. And I just, I really enjoyed that. It's a really neat kind of twist on things that we like to play a lot of the time. The only thing that was my gripe about this one is that the, the main board's not too bad, but the, Player, individual player mats are hideous. I mean, they're lovely. They're not. They're utilitarian. Look at this. It's bleached out by the light because there's nothing but white. There are no pictures except for like the labels and some faint little gray things that tell you where the cubes are supposed to sit. Like you don't know because it's recessed. I, I, I. Okay, you've got colorful dice and little space bits and things more white but and there's simple very basic kind of boring space art but this man this is almost unforgivable i mean excel sheets have more color i'm just saying <laughs> do they not they do they do <laughs> this is just plain white in fact even on the back it says basic. In fact, the first time <laughs> I saw this, because it is so basic, I was like, is this a prototype? Is this, did we get some weird, no, this is the game. But, fine. if you can it get past fine. the looks extremely fine. utilitarian player mats, the game's got a lot of game to give you, which really does make up for it. I suspect the last time we played this, I loaded the lid and did my flippy trick. What I, makes you say that? <laughs> because I just re repacked the entire game. It's very exciting. So and you like this game, too. I love this game. It's awesome. Uh, it's I really enjoy it because um, although the tech tree is the focus, you can really have to balance both because there's, yeah. there's a lot of points to be had in the uh, exploration. Oh, you, you can't ignore it, obviously. <laughs> yeah. What I find interesting, though, is I did a little checking, a little, little, little pre-checking. So we played this in December last year, just before you made your list. Mm. It was the first time we played this. We put this at 212. Probably because I only had one play. It didn't slow me down. I'm just saying I probably wanted to feel it out better before I logged yeah, it. Maybe. I figured but With more plays, let me tell you, um, you get more into it. And it's a lot of fun. I'm not saying I'm really super awesome at it or anything like that. In fact, I think you won both times. But... Uh, Three yeah. times? I don't remember. But 
that doesn't matter. <laughs> I have fun with it, regardless. Yeah, so, so, so yeah, if you really like focusing on the tech tree and you, you know you do these techs and you get to do this other yeah, tech and they lead onto this other puzzles. tech and stuff like that and comboing stuff off each other. and um, That's the neat thing is combos and stuff. And as you get to the higher levels too, you need to have like unlock one to get to two and then you might need to get two level twos to get to unlock at level three and stuff like that. They get, it gets a little more complicated as you go along as well. So it's a good one. Beyond the sun. Okay, moving along to my number 99. This is a bit lighter. <laughs> and that is more of a, I would say, a heavy family weight game. And that is Luxor. Luxor. Um, this game is mostly a racing game. But you want to collect all the goodies and get as many victory points as possible along the way and set up set collection and you have to get some keys and some certain things because to get to the so-called finish line is you're weaving your way around until you get into the center of your pyramid and that's where the true treasure room is and first two people in there i believe get the most victory points and really officially win um you kind of set the pace for the game too Along the way, though, on the tiles that you go to, you can either get set collection or, like I said, you get keys or some other miscellaneous different ways that you can get some victory points that you have to collect. And what's really kind of fun and very different about this game is the movement. You use cards. It's almost like dice rolling in a lot of ways, and sometimes you may use some dice to supplement it, too. But you've got cards laid out, and they've got numbers of how you're going to roll, and they might have some special movement involved. But you put your cards in the middle and fan out, and you get to choose one of the outer edge cards for your movement. So you kind of have two choices. But each time you get more cards, you start in the middle and spread the cards to either side. And so you have to think a little bit ahead if you're wanting to plan on doing some certain moves um, or getting to a certain place or having your little guys you want to position them at the end of the game. If they're not all going to make it to the finish line, you want them sitting under some victory points. So there's certain places where they have to go. So you semi-control your movement, but it's also at the mercy of what cards you draw. I like that. I like the element of a little bit of luck, a little bit of picking and choosing what you want to do. The set collection is really fun. It's pretty easy to teach to people. Family loves to play this game. It's a lot of pluses. And that's what's like. Yeah, I th I th this is a good one. I mean, I obviously, I don't love it as much as you, but I do enjoy him playing it with the family because everyone likes yeah, this one. They do love it. Um, I find it interesting that last year you always have a kind of a theme to your to your board games. Last year was like family games was your theme. Yeah. So this one was way up at sixty seven. <laughs> now it's kind of dropped down, so I think it's back to where it normally kind of rests. Possibly, yeah. And plus, we haven't really played it much as a fam. Um, true, true. recently it's too and it, sometimes it. sometimes those games will sink if I haven't played them a whole lot too y'all know my lists are rather fickle so <laughs> it's a good one it's a if you're looking it's for a live family game that plays fairly quick. I feel like it's a little heavier family minutes. game because you have to teach them about well, yeah, the, the certain movements I mean like, like a gamer cyclic. family oh well yes where you can play with yes. the kids oh, if yes, you're so a gamer okay. family that's true if you're not you, it, you might want to work your way up to it and practice the, um, or maybe play with not all of the 10 billion components or something. I think, doesn't this have an advanced version or something too? Or there's a, uh, or is an expansion or? We, we definitely played with expansions. It has. Maybe that's what I was thinking we of. Got, there's all kinds of expansions in that we got. I don't know if that comes in the base game. But I, I don't know if there's an advanced version or not. I don't it's recall. It's been a while, yeah. I don't recall if there's an advanced version. But we definitely have uh, tons of expansions. We got like three or four expansions. I don't know if they came in the box or not. But yeah. So that's something to keep in mind. You might want to research that a little bit if you think it might be a little he on the heavy side for the fam. But it is really good. And I think that it's intuitive. So if you go to back to play it again, it'll it's going to click really fast because you're going to remember, oh, it's really logical. Here's the movement. This is how you move. This is what you can get step by step. It's pretty nice. I like that about it. Cool, cool, cool. It is a good one. So what's your 98? My number 98 is another newer game for us, and it's another one that's not an incredible looker, I'm not going to lie. It's a wonderful world. Um, it's another one that really and truly the art, the theme, it's all about 
moving cubes. Yeah, it's a cube pusher. It's really a cube pusher, but it just melts that brain. It's a nice puzzly cube pusher. So it's got a very unique turn system throughout the round, and it fires off differently. Usually you set up your cards and everything, right? And you have different colors and they do different things. Then they'll all fire off at once and you have like your your income round or, you know, in the steps in the round, you have something where everything pays off at once. Well, in this, there's a hierarchy to the colors and things can chain. So you want to plan it if you, if you need to pay for different things. And of course there's different colored cubes pay for different things to give you various victory points. So you want to plan that you want the stuff. If you're low on income, Make sure it fires off first before you go down to the next one so that it chains to fire off so that you actually get the maximum amount of each color that you want. Because it's really hard if you have something and you're like, say you need a blue cube, but it fires off in the first round. If you don't have the stuff to get that to fire off in the first place, you know, you're setting yourself back an entire turn to pay for this card. So you really need to think through it, that slightly different mechanism than what you're used to. And that really just, I don't know why it just melted my brain in a good way. And I really liked that. And that's pretty much what the game is. It's all about t timing all of the stuff out to get the cards and maximize your victory points to the end. So, you know, yeah, is not it, a huge theme one, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's this uh, kind of a resource management engine builder. But yeah. like you said, it's very interesting because what you, you're basically take, choosing which card you want to build and you need the resources required to build that card. But once it's built, it gives you an ongoing income usually. And, Which is nice. And so you may want to build, need a card, like you said, you need to build a card so that it gives you the income to be able to build the card later on. Which gives you the come to build another card later on. It's a great on. engine, and it's a kind of a puzzle. You kind of kind of flow, got to follow the flow of of the resources, and you only have like five rounds, four or five rounds, and it's, it's over. Short, so, yeah. so you uh, you really need to getting going early is very important to build the stuff later on. And um, if you like engine building, resource management, um, it's got some a little bit of uh, I don't know if a set collection is the right word, but it's got um, you collect some. Uh, Victory point resources and yeah. there's cards that give you points at the end of the game and all sorts of stuff. So it's a good one. Um, there is a two player version that's coming out. Oh, uh, what? It's called A Wonderful Kingdom. It's a uh, kickstarted a while back and it hasn't fulfilled yet, but I believe it's going to eventually come to retail. Interesting. Which is a two player only version of this game. This playing this game plays pretty well two players. I didn't see any issues with it, but it really seems like the the it's a Wonderful Kingdom streamlines it and makes it even more. Um, better for two players obviously yeah but i love it because i always forget like today is the great day we celebrate the 10th anniversary of the end of the great wars and blah 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 what a wonderful world of peace and progress whatever it's a cute <laughs> pusher you're like this is a silly 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 theme so it's interesting this one we played a couple two or three times when we first got it and then we didn't play it for a while and then we went back to and it, we went back like, to wow. it. so it bumped up from 165 just off because we played this about a week or two before she made her list, so it really kind of remembered how how much she enjoyed it. And yep, I, if I recall correctly, you destroyed me at it, but made it. yes, <laughs> made it on the list. One sixty-five, all the way up to ninety-eight. It's pretty good. Ooh, ooh. Pretty good. And that's one thing that happens with a lot of plays, right? You start to get more familiar with it, and you're like, it's in your memory. And I don't want to put something on my list that I've kind of like forgotten what it's about. If that makes any sense, if it, if I'm having struggling to remember a lot about the game and I don't have any gameplay memories or anything that kind of stands out, then it's probably not going to make my top 100. Yeah. It's still an awesome game, but it doesn't have that just, whoa, standout power. And this one's picking up some steam on that. So that's pretty cool. All right. 97. Seven time. 97. This one I have had floating around on my list forever. And doesn't get played very much and I love it part of the reason is we don't like the two-player variant right and that game happens to be whoop Alhambra I love this game it's so much fun you've got four different types of colored currency and you've got cards that you're collecting that are of the various amounts and colors of said currency and you use those you can either pay exact change or overpay and in those little spots next to the currency are these amazing buildings and they've got walls on them and so you're trying to put them together and it's 
a combination of a little map builder and set collection and longest road, so to speak, because what you're doing is you're putting these on here and you want to be able to make your little person be able to navigate through all of these different buildings. But there's also extra victory points if you have the longest contiguous wall. There's all these. If you also have the most of a certain color building, you get the, some victory points each round for that. Some vic buildings in general are just worth more victory points. You get to go an extra turn if you pay exact change for buying things. Oh, man, I just love the choices. I love the fun ideas of building this wackadoodle little place and building up this palace and putting together your own unique every time. You're never going to play exactly the same way. You're not going to have the same tiles come out or the same money come out. And so it's always different. And I absolutely love that. Again, though, we just don't like the whole ghost player thing with the second yeah. two-player variant. And which is why I would tend to play this as like an app or something for a while. I went on a phase where I played it on the app because you can just play two people if you want or something. And yeah, the two player it. variant is, like I said, it's just a dummy player. And yeah, it's very clunky because you think you're winning in something and then all of a sudden, boom, the, the dummy player all of a sudden just is destroying you in something you were Well, yeah, because they throw out the entire tiles for the whole round. So if you do that, then blah, you know, you spend the whole time trying to race against this dummy player and not really so much each other. I don't know. It yeah. was just kind of rubbed us the wrong way. You just get unlucky but, and he happens to collect. Uh, all the purple ones or something, right? All the ones that you're yeah, collecting and not the ones that your opponent's necessarily collecting. So it's really strange. Yeah. But I just can't help but love this game. It's a nice little fun tile laying. And there's about a bazillion collection. expansions for this, but we've only just played the base game. Because we love it the way it is. Yep. Part. It's a good one. Good one. Uh, yeah, it's jumped, very good. It jumped up from 134 to 97. I don't have no clue why, but it did. Because I was playing it on the app. Oh, is that what you were doing? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Because it was fun. Because then I'd play two players and not worry about the whole dummy player thing. And I'd, or I'd set up three players and play all three or something. It was fun. I had more fun doing that. So, my next up, and I want to play it as a board game soon. My number 96. It may go higher with more plays, I suspect. It may, it may. The way you say this it worries me. <laughs> it is the beautiful, magnificent, monstrous on Mars. Look at this beauty. This is by the Heavy Games of Heavy Games designers, Lacerda. And oh, so good. This is such a great game. Now, this is a heavy Euro. So this is not for the faint of heart. But if you are feeling steadfast, please check out this game. I absolutely love it. It is on Mars. You are living and working and terraforming and developing Mars. And there's some, some supply ships and stuff in orbit. And you're down on the surface. You do a bunch of stuff. You may need to go up and get work on stuff in the supply ship so you can bring it down and do this and that. And you've got your workers down here and this. And if you switch back and forth with the little shuttle that goes back and forth from our supply stuff to the up in the um, past the atmosphere and the stuff to the surface, if you go with it, you can get certain bonuses and unlock your workers again to reuse them. Or if you want to kind of jump the gun and go down quicker or something more quickly than the shuttle's going and stay. You get kind of some little perks to that, but you don't get to unlock your workers. So you have to a lot of worker placement management because it's not like you, at the end of each round you get to collect everyone back. But again, it's got this delightful little, all these different mechanisms going on. It's a little, I don't want to say point salady. That's not really, it, kind of is. it is a little bit. Kind of is. Um, There's definitely some better ways to get points. To but, do things, yeah. right? Um, it's got the beautiful, it's Eno Tool art. So if you're a fan of Eno Tool, you love the art for this. The player mats, the board, everything looks really cool. The production value on this is super high, as always, with these games. I mean, even the box feels sturdier than some of the other board game boxes. I just, it's really neat. Um, and we're going to show off some bits. Yeah, look at this. Look at this beauty. See, and this is, and it's also got the nice recessed board, so your stuff's not going to slide all over creation. If you're supposed to put a cube there, you got a little bit of a recessed bit. Comes with this nice covered section, which this is another plus, and I love this trend. I hope everybody keeps it up. 
really actually useful inserts. Just, hey, look, your player pinkish purple thing, okay? Um, your light green, and when you're all done, you put your stuff back in, put this cover on it. We can store it any which way. You don't have to worry about the game getting all messed up. Love this. Again, it is a heavy Lacerda game. Lots of fantastic choices. It's one of those things where even if you don't get to do your ideal choice, you're going to have a great time with plan B and C and D because there's a lot of good choices throughout the whole thing. What have you done? Um, I did not do anything. I guess good, we'll sir. fix it later. Okie dokie. That's how that went. <laughs> You but, saw nothing. But, you saw nothing. But, you saw nothing. But. Oh, but. 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 I need you to turn in both your Lacerta and your, your Space Geek cards. Why? It's in my top 100. It dropped from 27. I have no explanation for this. I love this game. This game is amazing. Maybe it's because Hunter likes it. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> it is amazing. No, that is weird that it dropped like that. Maybe because I'm just like, not feeling the heavy. If you like uh, the Tall Lacerda sort of games and uh, you haven't played on Mars, you need to try it out. It is Definitely awesome. Worth it. Definitely um, worth it. What I like about Lacerda is um, of all the heavy Euros I play, he makes them the most thematic. Yeah, I mean, of any by any heavy euros I played. It feels thematic. You know how we were joking about like it's a wonderful world and stuff like that earlier, and you're like, eh, whatever. No, you actually feel like you're doing stuff on Mars and you're going on the shuttle. And I, yeah. oh, I love that. That's a lot so of heavy cool. euro games is you put you put a worker on a spot and it says you mine minerals. In this game, you're on a you take a little rover and you drive it around on the board and pick up. So stuff. much fun! I um, love the rovers. Love the uh, so robots. So he does a great job of yeah. putting theme into big, heavy, 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 heavy Euro games. So good. I'm so disappointed I'm, in you. Disappointed in you. I know. I don't know why it dropped. I'm guessing because I don't like it as well as some of the other ones. I shake my head. I know. I know. All right, what's your number uh, 90, <laughs> 95? That's slightly better than an amazing oh, I, heavy Euro Oh, game. I can already hear the sarcasm in this. <laughs> Hunter's going to fall out of his chair or weep bitter tears. Maybe both. But yes, I said it. My next game up. Slightly better than on Mars is... Telestrations. Yes! <laughs> and you know why? Because I have gotten to play this several times this year, finally, after not being able to play it at all and low possibility of playing it for any time in the near future. And it has been delightful, to say the least. So this game, Telestrations, is the game of telephone, if you know what that is, but in a picture version. So you have a little flip, uh, flip book, and you start out with a clue, and then the first person's going to draw that clue out. So say you have a bicycle, and you draw yourself a little bicycle. Then you flip up the card to the next page, pass it to the next person. They look at your picture, and they guess what they think it is, and they're like, oh, that looks like a bicycle. Then you flip it again and pass it to the next person. Well, the next person maybe doesn't draw bicycles very well. And it looks like they're pointing to something. And so the next person might write bicycle tire instead of bicycle. You don't know. Or they might say motorcycle. And then the next person, it, it keeps going back and forth all the, until it goes all the way around. And then everyone checks. And the, there is a scoring for this. And if you manage to get your actual word all the way around, you're supposed to get points. We sort of pseudo have played with points a couple of times. Or I have. Um, I think we tried, tried once. And, and I've done it once we're with done students. with it. We're like, eh, it doesn't count, you know. It's more fun to just play this game until everyone's sick of it. Or you've been laughing so hard that your stomach is sore and you have to quit. That's usually what happens. It's just absolutely hilarious. It's really good if you have a really mixed group, like a bunch of international students or, like, mixed generations or artists and non-artists or, like, any combination therein. It's a lot of fun because, oh, my goodness, people just get kind of crazy with it. Oh, it's so it's just a lot of fun. And it's nice to hang out with people. Just saying. 
Although I disagree that it is not better than on Mars. <laughs> I do agree that it is an awesome party game. It um, is. It is a blast. It may be my favorite straight party game, maybe. If not, it's very high up on the list. I can think of that and maybe one other that might contend with it. What? Um, the... All I can think just of now one? Is, no, not just one. The acting out one. Um, speechless? No, not speechless. The other one. Um, catch, not catchphrase. Oh my gosh, I totally blanked on the name of that game. Anyway, what are you doing? There? Times up. Oh, times, times up. up. I couldn't think yeah, of times up. The, yeah, they're pretty close. Yeah, I was gonna say you love times up as well. And <laughs> who? This one's a little more sedate. So if you have some wallflowers, you don't have to be acting crazy or flamboyant Correct. or anything. Right. So you're going to probably get everybody to play this one. Because even people that can't draw, like myself. It's better you, when you can't draw. Actually, yeah, because you get some wackadoodle guesses. And usually, honestly, it's the ones that get screwed up that are the funniest anyway. So have some fun with it. it doesn't yeah, we, matter we, we played this at a con several years ago. I immediately walked over and bought it. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was how much fun we had. It was fantastic. All right, so that was my number 95. So my number 94, we are switching from heavy-duty party game to nice, cute little box game. And that is the light and fluffy, fun little welcoming game that is Draftosaurus. Draftosaurus, you give everybody a little board, and then it has the cutest things in it. So you're going to have some dice you roll, and the dice tell you... Um, where, what regions you can put your dinosaurs. So you're going to get some a little, see this is the player board, and it's got little regions and stuff to it. And that's the game. You have a certain number of rounds, and you want to try to get, like, this region, you can only have one dinosaur in it. If you can keep it only one dinosaur, um, you get seven victory points. This one you can put only matching pairs, so... Um, you get a certain number of victory points for that. This one, every dinosaur in here has to be different. This one, they all have to be the same. You get the idea. So it's got stuff like that, but they're all different labeled regions as well. And so you're rolling that, and you get to do this and that. And it's just real easy to teach. It's really fun to play. Look at these ridiculously adorable little dinosaur-shaped meeples. They remind me of the meeples for dinosaur island or something except that these are um these are wooden and they're painted a variety of really really bright colors um yeah so it's like what's not to love about dinosaurs and a cute little drafting game it's got two sides you have the summer and the winter so you can mix it up a little bit and on top of that it actually does have some expansions that are a lot of fun they have the aerial show so you can have like pteranodons and whatnot and you have the marina, which gives you the cool little, um, oh gosh, um, my brain. All of a sudden. Mosasaurus and plesiosaurs and all that kind of good stuff. So anyway, they add a little bit of variety and a little bit of extra touch to the game. In fact, they have little, um, little sideboards that go with them as well. So all this variety of fun, cute dinosaurs, quick to play, easy to teach. I just, and I, I'm a sucker for dinosaurs. I like dinosaurs almost as much as I do space, to be completely honest. And boy, have they been coming out with some cool dinosaur games lately, too. So, Draftosaurus is one of those. It's a real winner. So, there you are. That's my number. What is that? 94. 94. Good one. You like that one, too. Yeah, not as much as you, but yes. I know. It's true. All right, this is another one that'll make you sad, I'm sure. No, because it actually went up. From last year. Oh, that's true. It did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my number 93 is the monster that is Star Trek Ascendancy. And I think one of the reasons that it's not like crazy high on my list anymore is this one's just really hard to get to the table. Um, this is a fantastic, if you want something that's Star Trek themed though, this is one of the best games to get for that. It's got... The different rate, it's got a whole variety of the different Star Trek races um, in the Star Trek universe. It's got a really neat map building, like galaxy building element to this. So, as you decide to warp away from somewhere, you are going to make these warp tunnels to the next location. But what's really neat about that is until you have that, have explored that next location, your warp tunnel can shift around a little bit and you can splay out your map really wide or you can keep them all really close together it's really fascinating how the the map can be formed with this because usually you have 
hexes or something that have to fit together and they're all a certain size and length and this and that. This is very different. So you're setting your warp tunnel up. It can be different lengths and different lengths of time. And then you've got your planets and you can kind of shift things around a little bit until everything's triangulated. Oh my gosh, that's so much fun. And then the races are very thematic. You know, the Federation, it's really good at going out and exploring new places, kind of branching out that way and being more, um, I don't know. Uh, Diplomatic. Diplomatic's a good word for it, yes. And then you've got the Klingons, who are quite the opposite. Their goal is to just spread as quickly as they can to the other places and fight them down and just conquer them. You know, and then you've got the Vulcans, which obviously are not going to be beating anybody up and you know they've got the fringy they like to wheel and deal and do business and as people are doing business they get some perks for this and that and the other thing as long as you don't attack each other and all this kind of stuff it's really interesting everybody's got their own thematic little asymmetrical powers they've got these little miniature ships that are absolutely adorable um that are you know for each race and oh, i'm trying to think of the other um well, I like the mechanisms in the game, too, because as you're building up your places, you can build different types of space stations and different things on the planets, and then they kind of build up an engine of resources and stuff for you to help you defend your land that you do have as well, help you continue to keep your fleet built up, ease of travel, all this kind of stuff, and you're kind of managing all of that while you try to fulfill and get as much ascendancy, which is the victory points, in the game before somebody else. So you're racing... At the same time, it's really fun. Yeah, so. just, uh, just to be clear, the base game only has Klingons, Romulan, uh, and uh, Federation. Federation, that's but it. But we've got several we got expansions. expansions. In fact, we've got some expansions on our Self of Shame over there that that's we haven't true. played. And we've never that's played true. the board either. I know. We need so, to work on this. Because you hate this game now, and so I hardly <laughs> ever get to play it. <laughs> I love how if it's like below 50, I must hate this game. You hate this game. I never get to play it. Yeah, but no, this is a beast. It's games, a very but... long game. It's a, it's a, it takes takes a it's it's a it's a long game. It's probably oh gosh, probably they say an hour player. It's probably more an hour and a half a player. Yeah, um, yeah. It can get it's a three big. player minimum, and uh, unless you use the Borg, and then you can play two player, or you can play solo. In fact, for, with the Borg expansion. Um, but most of our games that we played, we played one five hour, I mean five player game, and it took six hours probably to it was play. A long game. Uh, it, it, there, it's a beast, and um, it's I guess it's meant to be. I mean, it's it's, well, supposed, yeah. to, it's supposed to be epic, right? Um, but if you want to play a three player game and you know what you're doing, you probably can crank it out in three hours. That's people, true. Too. People were taking their turns pretty quick. Yep, I love it. It's one of my favorites. Uh, it's not my. No, it, it waffles between being my favorite Star Trek game and not my favorite. Not yeah. my favorite. Number two Star Trek game? Yeah. Um, just depends. This one's kind of a, a macro view. It's kind of pulled out. You're basically conquering planets and, and getting resources and building up and doing some, a little bit of technology and lots of fighting. Fighting is a, a major oh my part gosh, of this it's huge, game. Yeah. Um, there's other Star Trek games that kind of uh, pull in and you're, it's kind of more, you know, you see the individual characters and things like that. That's This is not that. This doesn't have characters and things like that. It's more uh, a galactic scale, I guess, um, as opposed to a more intimate game. I don't know if that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this one's, it's really good. The production value on it's really nice. Um, it's just solid, solid game, but definitely a time eater. So keep that in mind if you're interested in that one. So the next one is not nearly as much of a time eater, and that is my number 92, which, oddly enough, is also a space game. What? This time, though, it's Clank in space. You have to say it that way because they have the exclamation marks everywhere. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so Clank in space, this is a deck builder. And you start out and you're trying to get down through and accomplish a bunch of things on this spacecraft and you have to escape, right? You recover a bunch of treasures and stuff within the ship that have been like stolen and messed up by some alien. And then you need to get out before, uh, what do they say, before the erratabots hunt you down. No one wants to be eradicated by the erratabots. Erratabots. That's what it says. It says erratabots. So I can never remember what they're called, but we just said the aliens. You don't want to take off the aliens. So you want to get in there and get out as fast as you can with as much stuff as you can. 
Uh, this one's really fun because it's unlocks you unlock rooms as you go, and there's certain things like there's kind of like a little, for lack of a better word, it's like an escalator thing that helps you go faster through part of the ship. And there's one later on you can unlock possibly a transporter that'll help you get out a little bit faster. And there's different things like that. The whole time we're building up your deck, and you have things like movement or special weapons or things to help you recover items and whatnot in your deck. But depending on how good they are, they may make noise, hence the clank. And anytime you clank, you may be getting somebody's attention or irritating them. And you don't want to get their attention. You want to try to sneak in and get stuff out. Again, though, you also want to be the first person out because then you're safe for sure. So you're trying to race and do this stuff. You're making all sorts of noise. You're trying to avoid that stuff. You're trying to work your way around it. So much fun. So much fun. Love the deck building element to this game. The board's really fun, and it's really got neat, unique things in each room you can do and stuff. And the little alien pieces are cute. It's just a really well-produced, pretty smooth, fun, goofy game. I think it plays... Where's the playtime on it? Yeah, it's in the sweet zone of 45 to 90 minutes. It goes up to four players. It's fun at every player count. You really can't go wrong with it. Yeah, this one is kind of a slightly more advanced version of Clank. If you've played Clank and you haven't played this one, uh, one of the strategies in Clank is to rush in, grab the first artifact, and then rush out and see if, see if you can win that way. This one, you kind of have to, like she said, you have to unlock areas before you can move, advance to where you get the, the artifacts, yeah. or the, or the cool items. So you can't just rush in and rush out. There's a little more, <laughs> little more a little more stuff strategy. you got to go on before strategy. you do that. And then you rush in and rush out. <laughs> but I like this one. I like deck building games that have a map and stuff going on, and this is a good one. Um, I like this, this one slightly more than Clank itself. I think you like it more than I do, I think. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's a good one. It's a really fun deck building game. Yeah. So if you like deck builders and you want a little variety and a space game theme on top of it, there's your winner. You didn't talk about your favorite thing, the 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 Star Trek E and Star Wars references. Oh, all the little references on the bottom of the cards. They have flavor text on these cards. <laughs> and if you're a sci-fi nut, you will find them highly amusing as you're sitting there rifling through all the cards and stuff. They're fantastic movie references and quotes and different things. So yes, that is a delightful little treat on that. All right. Last but not least, Last. the best of the worst. I'm not sure I agree with you on that. But anyway. It's the top my, of your bottom I know, 10. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> my number 91 today is a very interesting game called Council of Four. I think what really kind of drew my attention the first time to this game is the weird color scheme for yes. this. Because your council people, let me show you this. I'm this, taking a risk opening this. Now. Nah, we're good. It's got a lid. It's actually got some good packaging going on here. Look at this. What? Look at the colors. They're wackadoodle, guys. Okay, some of them came a little loose, but there's bright orange. There's some, there's two layers here. There's pink. Pink. Yes, I said it. There's like some gray. It's like the typical color. Bright orange, red, brown, blue, yellow, green, purple. I mean, just wacky colors. But let me show you the board, and maybe that'll all become a little bit more clear. Because the board is pretty wild itself. Here's a corner of it. <laughs> so what's going to happen on this game, and this is what I like. Here we have all these lovely colored regions here. Hence this lovely map. And you, you play a certain group, obviously, and you mark the board and stuff with it. But... There's different end game results. What you're trying to do is work your way around through and you want to take over and make sure you leave one of your markers on as many cities as possible throughout the game because they give you benefits and stuff at the end of the game as well as during. At the end of the game, you get bonuses for like taking over a vertical region or you might have bonuses for taking over all of one color, which is also difficult. It's really... I'm sure someone has done it, but I would think it's practically impossible to do both. It's so hard to get all over the board and stuff. But what's really kind of fun and weird about it is you've got these the council people that are at the bottom of the board, and they kind of help you dictate how the turns go, what you can do. And they're of these bright colors. 
But you have you put them in play yourself, and you can actually go through and shuffle them so that there's more, you know, like you want to be able to do something that the brown guy has benefits for. So you can put him in there. But later on, Hunter's like, oh, brown does nothing for me. So he can go in and try to move the council member guy off, push him off the board, and then I'm losing all my benefit. It's really interesting how it kind of twists into this... Euro game that you know you're traveling around and doing stuff and we have a lot of games like that right where you're traveling and you try to put your marker on a city and you get benefits and things build off of it from that but I really liked the unique weird council thing that's going on with this um how long does this one play this is uh, a yeah it's another one that's not super long um I think it's fun at two player and we've played it with more, and it was just as fun. I feel like you get a little bit less accomplished, of course, because everybody's doing so much. But it plays really well at all the player counts as well. Yeah, the, the another factor in deciding which areas you're going to uh, take over for points is you also get combos for adjacent regions. So you might want to get right, yeah, two yeah. regions adjacent to each other so you can get a combo off of that because they kind of chain off of each other. But then those two might not help you with scoring, but they have a good combo that you like. So you have to kind of judge, balancing. judge what you want to do and not do. It's a good one. Um, we haven't played this one in a while. We probably, it's should, been a play while. This, probably should play this one again. I like mm -hmm. it. It plays pretty quick. So It does. I want to say it's right around the hour mark. So the original version of this game, I don't know who, who, who what company had it, was uh, not nearly as insanely produced as the C oh, okay. CMON or whatever they're calling them, Cool Mini or <laughs> what, Come On or whatever they're called today. Um, <laughs> They put miniatures in it and way overproduced it, but it looks amazing. So It, it does. It's really it fun. It adds a little something to the game, I think. Anyway, it's a good one. I haven't played this one in a long time. It's been a little bit. It's been a little but, bit. Yeah, now I want to play it. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's just, it's got that appeal to it, and I think you're right. The minis do add a lot to it. It's just, I think Simon does a really good job of adding that little extra pizzazz to a game. That, I mean, yeah, you'd still have fun and do things with it, but it's so much more fun moving these really brightly colored pieces that are obvious where, you know, they need to go and stuff. Right, right. Versus, you know, just a little cardboard piece or something. Right, so right. Adds a lot of fun to it. So I hope you got a nice little taste of a pretty wide variety of games. Um, we'll see what happens. This theme, I want to say, is what should we call this? This week's 10 is the hodgepodge. I don't think there's a pattern to it at all. It's got a little bit of just about everything. Um, maybe it's probably like all your tens, though. <laughs> it may be. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you can see kind of a theme going on with them, but this one distinctly says no to all of it, all different stuff. But um, please put if you're doing a top 100 list as well along with this or whatever, put it in the comments. We like to share stuff like that. And um, if you played those games, talk about talk them up. It's great to get information about different games if you're looking to play or try something new. It's fun to get all the feedback with that. And stay tuned for another episode with our 90 through 81 coming soon. Take care. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Click subscribe to join our wonderful viewer community. Want to be notified when we upload a new video or go live? Click on the little bell below.